Grace and peace to all who do the will of our Father in heaven. I am trying to find the words to really sum up the way I feel. Um, frustration is one of them. And, you know, I, you know, I'm checking myself. I'm checking my tone. I'm checking my speech. <laughs> because if I don't, I may be more harsh and rude than I want to be. So I'm, so I'm keeping myself in check. But as I, as I look at the events that, that are going on in Israel with Hamas and things like that, and I see that, especially on the, so, you know, the Christian side, right? All you hear are people saying, prayers for Israel, prayers for Israel, God bless Israel, be with Israel, this and that. And the teachers are saying, or at least the people with the um, channels, are saying, well, Israel is at war, this is prophetic, things like that. But nobody's saying how how this is prophetic. Nobody's saying what this is in prophecy. And the few who do dare to try to say what it is in prophecy bring up Gog and Magog. And that is something that is easily proven to be something that, that happens after after the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ on earth. So, I mean, I guess the other thing too is they'll, they'll pull up something from the past and say, well, this Psalms 83, just, just kind of ambiguous things that, that you don't really see in laid out in Revelation. Uh, everything else matches perfectly. So, the frustration is that people aren't, they aren't, they aren't, they, you know, they're just going along with everything that they hear. They don't question anything. And again, it's because of their bias. They're biased towards who they think is Israel. They're biased towards the discomfortable lie. They don't want to let go of this comfortable lie. They don't want the uncomfortable truth. So they don't challenge what they've heard, even though they, they, everybody knows that the, the dragon has deceived the whole world. The dragon, um, in Babylon, by her sorceries, were all nations deceived. But they still don't think that they've been deceived on this matter. Even though they can't find a single verse in the Bible that supports this state of Israel being in existence right now, they'll say, well, God promised to gather Israel back together again. Do you read those, read those print? Post one of those in the comments. I would almost dare you to do that. Because if you do, you will see that the Most High promises to restore them at the same time as He is coming back. As our Savior, Messiah, is coming back. In that they are also being delivered from the land of their captivity. You can't have them being restored without restoring them from the land of their captivity. So where was this these people uh, w when were they carried away captive to any place when did we see them being carried away captive to any nation and how long were they there you know there's there's a lot that that you gotta kind of bring up and look at and so I'm you know, like I said, I'm just frustrated with people you know I'm, you know I, I just I don't know how we can have so many people who are just completely ignorant about what the Bible says. They're just saying prayers for Israel, God bless Israel, God is going to fight for Israel, this and that. Because you don't have an actual idea of what's happening. So all you can say is prayers for Israel. Because you don't actually know what's happening right now. So is it Gog and Magog? No, because you look at Revelation 20, you see, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to battle. Why does this happen? It happens because God puts a hook in their jaws, like he says he is going to do. And I believe it was Ezekiel 38. Uh, let's see, where was it in Ezekiel 38? I didn't, or I didn't go straight to it already. I know it's in here though. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's start at three. 
Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tobal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thine enemy. Those hooks in the jaws, he's bringing them down to the valley of Megiddo, the valley of Jehoshaphat, that is Armageddon. And uh, what is Ezekiel 39, 6 says, And I will send fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Well, how is he, how, why is he sending fire on them? Or when does that happen? Let's go back to Revelation here. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. In Revelation 20, verse 9. Now, where, where did we read that at? Ezekiel 39, 6. Oh, my wife is calling me now. Terrible timing. Ezekiel 39, 6. I will send fire on God and those who dwell securely in the coastlands. Oh, sorry. That's the wrong verse. I should be reading here. And I will send fire on my God and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. See where see where it is placed that Jesus Christ hasn't reigned on earth for a thousand years yet. So why are we talking about Gog and Magog? Why you know? Anyway, I gotta make this video short so I can call my wife back. So um maybe I'll make another video on this topic later. I'm very let me just stop there. <laughs> I'll just stop there. Uh so uh, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.